All right, I'm Nick. Today we're supposed to be going fishing. Dan just showed up to process all those parts, but he brought this box. Now this box should have the beanies in it. The lighting's probably crazy. Let's see what else. What else is in here? Oh yes, there we go. We're gonna have them up on the website. I'm gonna have them on fishing. We'll talk about it more while I'm fishing. I get the kayak loaded up. Go find some warm, warm, sunny place to hide because it was 29 degrees last night. Off we go. So the kayak is loaded up. We are headed to our fishing destination. We're gonna go throw the Ned rig. That's the plan anyways. We're going to throw a Ned rig. We're going to see if we can catch some large mouth on the ultralight. Remember, the ultralight is only, you know, six foot, rated for one sixteenth of an ounce. It has no backbone. Got a 1000 series reel on it. I'm just going out here to entertain myself. It's fun. Uh, I enjoy it. It's a big change of pace. Uh, obviously, I've chased a lot of big fish, had a lot of fun. This is just going back to your childhood roots. And it's usually really peaceful out here. And it's it's what I enjoy these days, okay? Nice and quiet. So, I got the hat on. The hat is super comfortable. Remember, it has like a fleece liner in there, so it's gonna keep you nice and warm. Uh, super stretchy. Uh, obviously, the leather patches, super, super nice. You guys saw that video where it was hand sewn. Uh, turned out great. I guess it's known as a sewing machine, right? But uh, it's done by hand. It's not a computer or anything. It's a, a random person. Uh, but we're out here, we're getting there. We gotta go in, get all set up, we'll get the kayak unloaded, and we'll see if we can catch some largemouth. I've actually never been out here fishing when it was sunny. Every time I've ever come out here fishing, uh, it's been overcast and rainy and just nasty. So, uh, a little change of pace, we'll see what happens. Uh, it was pretty cold last night. Uh, the water temperatures out here was about 52, 53 degrees. It's been pretty cold for the last few nights, but the sun's been out, so hopefully that helps out. We'll see if we catch some fish. All right, kayak is unloaded. Now, I bought these socks, I know, very sexy. I bought them months ago. They're supposed to be waterproof. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. The goal was to buy them to go offshore, launch the kayak, not get wet. My feet are cold, but are they waterproof? That's the question. We'll find out. We're gonna go out here. So you catch a fish. There is one boat out here. Uh, I was actually gonna go down there and fish, but since he's down there, I'll go look elsewhere, uh, see if you catch a fish. We're just gonna throw the ultralight, the little small Ned rig, go into some details. Hopefully we catch some fish. So I've been out here fishing. I've been fishing for about two hours. I only have one fish to show for it, okay? Only have one fish to show for it. It's been super slow. I have seen an unbelievable amount of fish. And that's why I came out here today. And today's goal isn't to come out here and just slay the fish. It's super bright out. It was really cold last night. And I wanted to get out here when it was bright. I've never fished this place when the sun was up. And you can only rely on your fish finder to show you so many things before you gotta just get out and use your eyes. And Especially in this fishery, you know, where it's super clear. Obviously, some places across the country, the water's filthy, uh, even here locally, and you just can't see anything. But with this, I knew I could come out. I knew I could also, you know, look, use the fish finder, but really use my eyes and see what I could see. Now, I've seen a bunch of fish. I've thrown the trick worm, I threw the Ned rig, I threw the fluke. I finally pulled this little crankbait out of the package. Nothing special, you know, Walmart special, Strike King, something or other. And look, those fish right there, those three bass, you guys can't see them because if you're on my chest, if you're on my head, you might have been able to see them. They followed that crankbait. They're just a little behind. And you know, I can see this submerged trees and the structure, and there's a flat right there. And there's a fish on that flat moving right to left now. I have been casting all through here. I just can't get them to eat. I get some grass on there. I got some grass on there. That's just part of it. I don't have a whole tackle box with me. Uh, I'm really out here just to explore. The more I can learn today, I can come back, 
in the future later in the week or whenever and see what I got going on. Now look, right here we got a shallow, we got a little shallow flat right here. Let's say a sand flat drops off on both edges. Realistically, if I would have known that, I would run that crankbait down the side of these edges, hoping to bounce off of there and catch a fish or two. Uh, they're there, there goes another one, right there. They're on the edge of that. Now, we'll, instead of going too far, we'll just cast up here a few times. And I'd rather work this edge left to right like this instead of coming directly at it. And I just got some more grass on there. Uh, but that's what we're here for, right? It's not that we're, I'm not that I'm gonna be upset about this grass, we're, we're learning. We're just putting the time in to figure some things out. And that's really what this video is gonna come out to be. What we're gonna talk about is exploring. You know, it's very easy to go to a place that you've fished a handful of times or even hundreds of times and just go fish the same stretch of water. And I, I see it all the time. I've seen it for years in the local community where just inshore fishing. I have guys who legitimately fish the same two or three stretches of area and they fish it all year it doesn't matter what the tide's doing it doesn't matter what the weather's been like it doesn't matter if a hurricane came in and changed the entire layout of that fishery uh, and that happens in the south we get hurricanes and it'll come in and it'll shift that entire sandbar it'll change the entire grass flat. sometimes it'll even change like the species of grass will actually change and that stuff has a major impact on fish. So this morning, my goal is to come out here while it was sunny. And obviously I'm gonna ramble a little bit cause I'm looking around and I'm still trying to learn my talking and spend some time out here and look for fish, see what I can find. There's a huge stump here, you know? I don't know much about this fishery. Obviously it was logged a long time ago and filled with water. Uh, we put a dam up down there and they filled it with water. That's how a lot of these fisheries were created. Um, a lot of, that's how a lot of the fisheries in the country were created. Um, obviously it works, there's plenty of fish in here. Uh, a lot of small fish. You can take as many as you want under a certain, I mean there's a size limit, under a certain size and per day, but you can come here and catch them all you wanted. Uh, I have a lot of big fish in here. There's a bunch of fish over 10 pounds uh, every year during the spawn. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm out here looking. I want to, they're not spawning yet, but I want to know the body of water so I can spend more time in here the right time of the year and hopefully catch a good fish. And if I don't, well, I'll settle for some dinks. Uh, but, you know, back behind me 200 yards or so, there's a real, real shallow flat, real shallow entrance. Uh, the wind's blowing me in here pretty good right now. But, if I would have stopped there, you would have thought it was a foot deep back here. But right now, I'm in five feet of water. And I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was here. I mean, you have obviously timber sticking out of the water, uh, you know, brush piles on top of that stuff. Um, I'm sure there's fish in here. I'm drifting pretty quick and I'm just looking around. But I never would have known this was here. Uh, even fishing the sound, fishing the bay, fishing the offshore. It is so easy to just go back to what you have seen and what you know. Uh, I fished here three or four times. It'd be very, very easy for me just to go back to where I had fished all those other days and where I had caught fish. But instead, I'm up here, middle of nowhere. I only caught one fish. I only had one bite, okay? Uh, one bite, one fish, who knows, probably 12 inches long. You guys will see it here in a second. Uh, but it doesn't matter because I'm not here to slay the fish. I'm here to learn. That way, when it is overcast or when the conditions are better, when the water warms up just a little bit, I know that this timber's here and I can come back in here and I can try to catch a fish. I had a bunch of fish back in that direction following the crankbait. I just blasted off that stump. I've been hitting this with the crankbait, but I haven't seen any fish up in here since I've been pedaling around and the water's really, really clear. So exploring, make sure you're exploring. Put in the time to go look other places. You never know what you're gonna find. I'll tell you this, some of the best redfish fishing I have ever found has been on days that I didn't wanna go, days the wind were bad and I, I was forced to go look other places and even travel, drive 30, 45 minutes just to find a place where I could run a charter or something and 
under certain winds and I found a lot of amazing fish doing that. So keep that stuff in mind. Go look, go explore. You never know. I imagine throughout the year there are brim stacked all through here. Maybe I'll come back and catch some brim up here some other time. Um, you know, even looking for redfish, I have found amazing trout places. Looking for trout, I've found amazing redfish. Shoot, looking for redfish, I found sheep's head, okay? Uh, and that's just part of it. Like, there it is. There's a brim right there. There's multiple brim right there sitting on that stump. And they're up here pretty shallow. Uh, but they're out of the wind. And that's what, that's what I would do right now. I'd hide from the wind. There's some more over there. Uh, look, go explore. Watch the rest of this video. These hats are up on the web page. I'll show you a clip of me opening up the box this morning. Uh, I'll go into some more depth of the company it makes. They make a pretty sweet wallet they sent me too. Talk about that stuff another time. Go explore, find some fish. If you have any comments or questions or anything, just uh, drop them down there in the comment section or uh, shoot me an email at nick at navarkayakfishing.com. Gonna put out a video here in a little bit about the links. We get a lot of questions about the links, about do I still like it? Uh, what I keep fishing from it, obviously I'm fishing from it. And make a video about durability because durability is a concern. I will tell you that durability is a concern. All right, enough rambling. Thanks for watching. There's a large mouth right there, right there, a little guy. Oh, oh, that was a better one. Look, they're way back in here. It's three feet deep. All right, got to go. All right, I have been fishing for a while. It got windy. The whole waterproof sock thing. Yeah, they might be waterproof. My feet are freezing. I have gone through the Ned Rig, the Trick Worm. I threw the Fluke. I finally switched this little crankbait and I finally caught a fish, okay? Finally caught a fish. Oops. Way down there. There he is. First fish. Not on camera. First fish right there on the crankbait. Oh, he was hooked pretty good. There you go. Not a monster. Yeah, let me work on my filming skills. A little sexy shad action. Got it done. Alright, after exiting my little exploration came down back to the main lake that is the third just out here throwing the crankbait it's a little windy so sun's not penetrating as far uh, which obviously is making them make a few more mistakes but just burning this crankbait along they've been hitting it uh, i missed one because so i was drifting too fast I caught the grass that time oh. Part of it. Well, we ended up catching a few nice fish. Well, I mean, not nice, but a few, a few dinks. Caught some grass. Definitely not how I would prefer to be fishing right now. But for just showing up with an ultralight to do some exploring, I'm not upset about it. Throw this a few more times. If I catch anything cool, I'll film it. If I catch any more dinks, uh, well, I'm not gonna film it. Brim. Do you see all these brim? Can you see all those brim out there? We're spooking and we're drifting into them. This place is loaded with brim. I just talked about that in the video. Explore. Look, there's another one. That's a pretty good one over there. I don't know if you guys see the little baby with a crossing right out here in front of us, about, about right here. I don't know if you can see. Polarized glasses. There's a whole little school of them over here. Never would have seen these guys if I hadn't just came back here. It's way too shallow in here. It's crystal clear. I can catch those brim though, especially when the sun is setting. Not when the sun is up like this, but you have to know where they are to catch them.